It's a human tragedy that touches all of us. It goes by different names, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, dementia. The symptoms of mental illness may differ, but its impact is equally devastating. The headlines barely scratch the surface. In an era of shrinking healthcare dollars, our city streets have become de facto mental wards. Poe's mental stability is in question. Officers say he made rambling statements to them when questioned after the stabbing. And to Deadly know, encounters are just one of the consequences that come about when mentally ill and healthy populations coexist. And on the corner of Second and Pike, he was holding a two foot sword. Officers said they were unsure of Allison's mental state. The cost to society is staggering. Trying to talk him into giving up the weapon. Officers said. Few people understand those costs better than Dr. Abram Hoffer. Over the past 40 years, Dr. Hoffer has successfully treated thousands of schizophrenic patients. I don't think anyone has ever seriously considered what the total cost is, but you have to take into account the cost of being in a hospital, the cost of not working, therefore you're not paying income tax, the cost of the police system that have to work with you, the cost of the courts, the cost of drugs. It's estimated that a schizophrenic patient will cost society roughly two million dollars in his or her lifetime. Yet schizophrenia affects less than two percent of the population. Depression, on the other hand, has a more familiar face. It affects nearly 18 million Americans each year and is one of the major causes of lost workdays and decreased productivity. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, depression-related illnesses cost society between 30 and 44 billion dollars annually. Now these are just the economic costs, and I'm not even talking about the social cost and the family cost of destroyed families, destroyed lives, divorces, the, uh, the things that, the awful things that happen to patients who have been sick. These are terrible costs. Adding to the terrible cost of mental illness is the reality that for most patients, mainstream medical treatment is simply not making them well. The primary form of treatment today is drug therapy, which, aside from its considerable expense, often carries with it side effects that can be every bit as debilitating as the underlying illness it's intended to alleviate. But there is hope. Hope in the form of a treatment whose roots are as old as medicine itself. Increasingly, medical science is looking to natural medicine for answers and cures. As a young woman, Laurel Tilly lived on the streets for a time. She attempted to take her own life on three separate occasions and was finally hospitalized. The diagnosis? Schizophrenia. For most, a condition without a cure. It was a constant hell. It was like living in a dark hole. It was like it would never end. Like It was just terrible. I would cry all day long and hide in bed and never get up and I wasn't eating properly. Um, just this constant noise in your head. How's it going, bud? Today, Laurel is a happy and productive wife and mother of two. It's like night and day. I would have never thought it possible to feel as good as I do now. Fifteen years ago, Tom Warren was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Well, my doctor told me, he says, I might have as long as seven years to live. He was trying to be as, as optimistic as possible. But he plainly told us that there wasn't anything they could do for it. I don't mind telling you. I'm not afraid of dying, but I can't describe that death. I wouldn't even try. It's, it's not, nobody would really want to know. Today, Tom is completely cured of his crippling dementia. He has written one book about his recovery and is currently working on a second. It's really nice being alive. It's, it's kind of like being born all over again. 
Like Laurel Tilly, Bill Bertrand was diagnosed as schizophrenic. For the past four years, after being treated by Dr. Hoffer, he has been virtually free from symptoms. He's quite happy with the ways now. I have lots of friends and enjoying spending time with friends and working and playing and visiting other people and doing volunteer work. So I'm quite active now and it's, it's um, love is back again. Each of these people was successfully treated through the use of natural medicine. They are by no means the exception. Thousands of people each year are being made well, not just better, but well, through the application of natural medicine. I have seen in my own practice these treatments bring about remarkable results. The range of mental health problems that can benefit by natural treatments is fairly complete. It includes depressive disorders, anxiety disorders, uh, schizophrenic disorders, and to an extent, but not completely, bipolar disorders. Over a 15 year period, I've seen approximately 6,000 patients. At least half of them had tried conventional medicine and had either not responded or had had intolerable side effects. Of that group, uh, virtually all of whom used natural medicine because that's why they came to me, uh, at least 75% had significant improvement and many of them had dramatic relief or complete elimination of chronic problems. So just what is natural medicine? It's a term that embraces many forms of treatment. The unifying thread is that each draws its source from naturally occurring substances. Vitamins, minerals, herbs, and hormones are common components of natural medicine. A partial list of some of these substances and the disorders they alleviate includes niacin and vitamin B6 for the effective treatment of schizophrenia, St. John's wort as an alternative to Prozac for curing mild depression, vitamin B12 and ginkgo biloba for treating dementia, tryptophan, an amino acid found in foods such as bananas for relieving depression, and thyroid hormone, also for treating depression. Dr. Gaby and his colleague, Dr. Jonathan Wright, have collected more than 35,000 articles documenting the positive effects of natural treatments on a range of disorders. In increasing numbers, double-blind studies are proving that these methods work. As you can see from the files in this room and the some 35,000 articles that Dr. Gaby and I have accumulated, there is considerable literature in certain areas of natural medicine where there is the most literature that goes back literally decades to the 20s and 30s is in nutrition and in botanical medicine. Now this is not research that set out to be research in quote alternative medicine unquote. This is research done by mainstream research scientists at universities with medical schools. Dr. Gaby and I have collected all of this not from so-called alternative medical journals but from the regular medical journals. A lot of this is uh, already documented. It's not that we necessarily need to do more research to prove what we've already proven. It's that we need to uh, talk physicians and other healthcare practitioners into learning about this and into offering it to their patients. So it's not a problem of lack of research. It's a problem of underutilization of what's already been looked at. One area of natural medicine that has gained particular stature in recent years is called orthomolecular therapy. Orthomolecular refers to the optimum dose of a natural compound. The term was coined by Linus Pauling, whose now famous work in the use of vitamin C in the treatment of colds was prompted by research pioneered more than 40 years ago by Dr. Hoffer. And so orthomolecular refers to the use of things which are normally present in the body like amino acid, vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, enzymes. We use these in the optimum concentration in order to help people get well. Dr. Hoffer's specialty is schizophrenia. His treatment has achieved phenomenal success. Of 5,000 acute schizophrenic patients he's treated over the past 40 years, 90% were cured if they followed his program for two years. Schizophrenia is largely thought to be incurable by conventionally trained practitioners. We proved that when you added vitamin B3 in optimum dosages, say three grams per day or more, plus vitamin C, plus a few others, that we could 
markedly improve their recovery rate. And by that I mean that they are free of symptoms, that they're getting along well with their family, getting along well with the community, and paying income tax. And that's, I think, a main criteria, 90%. Furthermore, over half of all chronic patients, those who suffered from schizophrenia for at least seven years before coming to Dr. Hoffer, had recovered after 10 years on the program. Have you had any major surgeries? It's important to remember that natural medicine works hand in hand with mainstream approaches such as drug therapy. It's not an either or proposition. So the combination treatment is the best because with the combination treatment, once you have used the drug to help them improve, you maintain that improvement by the use of vitamins. So you can now withdraw the drug, get rid of the drugs entirely, or, or take such a small amount that there are no side effects. And now they're able to function perfectly well. The question remains, if these natural treatments are as successful as they appear to be, why aren't they more widely adopted? In medical school and residency, we don't learn these alternative treatments. So to go out and try to practice these, we have to do a lot of work on our own to learn them. One of the major reasons is that the average uh, psychiatrist is only taught drugs. If you pick up the average psychiatric journal, 60% of the pages are, adver are advertisements for drugs. There is no one pushing vitamins because there's no patent on them, no money. Why should a drug company push niacin when they don't make any profit on it? Let's put this back. Why then do psychiatrists like Dr. Hoffer use natural medicine? Why do I do it? Because I don't know of any other way of getting my patients well. I spent so many years of my life being miserable <laughs> to finally have some happiness. Like even when I, I had things to be happy about, I wasn't happy before. But now it's like every little thing is just a great joy. Other people should know that this treatment works. I think adopting policies for natural health treatment to be more widespread could help communities, individuals, and families cope tremendously with mental health problems. Natural medicine offers great hope for, uh, for the future. Uh, the healthcare system today is falling apart because we're overburdened with cost. Uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, treatments that are frequently dangerous and often do not work for chronic illnesses. I think natural medicine is particularly effective for many chronic illnesses, and that's where we should first focus our research effort and, uh, and education effort. It takes 40 to 50 years in medicine today for any really new idea to get established. And in terms of orthomolecular medicine, we are there now. We are now 40 years, and you can see a, a most amazing change over the past two or three years. I think within 10 years, this will be the standard treatment around the world. The costs of mental illness are enormous, both in terms of destroyed lives and in the financial burden it places on society. As healthcare dollars grow increasingly scarce, we must consider all effective methods for treating mental disorders. Natural medicine may be the most potent and cost-effective means we have for making patients well once and for all. To find out more about the role of natural medicine in healthcare, contact the Foundation for Excellence in Healthcare at 206 718 3334 or by email at the address below. Mm -hmm.